we had a massive reaction to people about the state of Dublin City. Uh, is it a dive? Is it dirty? Is it drug infested? Is it uh, basically intimidating to visit Roshi? Yeah, I heard most of that piece, Pat, and uh, I must say I agreed with a lot of the commentary about the state of Dublin City. Um, I think the north side in particular, the north side of town in particular, is an absolute disgrace, I have to say. Um, it's intimidating. It's full of dereliction, vacancy. Um, there's a lot of antisocial activity because of that. And uh, it's it's a scandal, really, that the capital city is in that condition. And you get the sense that people have just given up on it. The city council in particular, the level of cleansing is is very, very weak. Now, the, the Bryn reports they just can't get the people, you know, that during COVID uh, people stopped doing that kind of work and are not coming back. OK, but these are basic public services that we should be providing. Um, but I think a lot of this comes from the dereliction. And I travel in through the north side in the morning and uh, in through Ballybock and uh, North Strand and so on. And like that whole part of the inner city really needs it, it needs a, a government task force to address the many different aspects of this. But I think key to it is ensuring that people are actually living in the city centre. And that's how you get the passive policing. And it also brings a vibrancy to an area because then you have the local coffee shops and you have the local, you know, small uh, supermarkets and that kind of thing. Generally shops around. But the whole thing is to have people living in it. It's derelict. It's deserted at the moment. It's dangerous. It's dangerous during the daytime. Um, And there is a need for a government response to that because, as I say, there's a whole lot of different aspects to it. I've often wondered why nothing has been done about it. You know, you have to bear in mind that that part of Dublin City has been represented by, you know, ministers for finance over many years, the Taoiseach, so on. It is utter neglect and it needs government attention. Fergus. Well, um, I travel through the north inner city as well, coming from Drogheda, and I see uh, lots of activity, of community activity from the north inner city partnership which has been established for some years now. It's working very effectively. I see but you wouldn't st- see that in your, no, but I in do. your commute, oh, Fergus. Oh, no, I mean- but you actually do, Pat, because this is the difference because they've, they've increased the number of trees and vegetation actually on the road coming in. Uh, I see. I see lots of good things in the city. Uh, I obviously, but came have in. you walked up and down O'Connell I ha- Street? I and, have, and would you feel comfortable? Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I did that last week, actually, and I, I, at the time that I walked now was during the day. I, I do believe there is a new police station there. There's a lot more investment going into the city when you walk in places like where I work in Grafton Street, Dawson Street, and coming up the keys this morning from the from the tunnel was absolutely fantastic, and I see hundreds of young now people. Now the sunshine does yep. cast its yep, benediction it on everything. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't but it doesn't change. It, it doesn't change the fact that there are lots of young people <coughs> uh, visiting our cities, and they're they're teaming everywhere. Lots of of different people from different countries. So I wouldn't do down Dublin. I say there are significant issues. They are being. A Addressed in terms of the North Inner City Partnership, I see it, I know it, uh, and everybody that that it I talked to from, from a community that area. perspective, and there yeah, but, is good work is, being done yeah, there. But course, in terms of the structure, well, I didn't stuff. interrupt you. I am saying yeah, yeah. that it is active; it is doing fantastic okay. work, and the new community partnerships, police partnerships right around the country, are working in towns like Drogheda as well. Heather. Yeah, I, I think there is a major problem in terms of especially the north inner city of Dublin. There's no doubt about it. And it's not just Dublin, to be honest. I would say a lot of major towns around the country are suffering from crime and antisocial behaviour. There's a fear factor in many uh, centre towns uh, around the country, especially in terms of drugs. You know, we have a major problem with, with the Gardaí in, in this in this state. Uh, last year, we had an 80% fall in the number of Gardaí that were recruited. We also have one of the lowest per capita number of police uh, in the whole of the European Union. And that hasn't shifted per capita at all, really, since 2016. You mean, although the numbers go up, the population has gone up too. Exactly. So we, we had a, a figure of 270 uh, Gardaí per 100,000 in 2016. Today it's 280 uh, per 100,000. Uh, and it is one of the lowest in all of Europe. Uh, we have, you know, hundreds of Gardaí are being assaulted while they work uh, currently. 
every single year. We've had uh, the amount of retirements and the amount of resignations on an annual basis is far higher than the number has been recruited. And this is a significant problem. Guardi don't feel safe themselves and we believe that protections should be put in place uh, in, in terms uh, of Guardi. What it, sort of thing? Well, we would like to see a, a minimum sentence for a Garda being assaulted in the line of duty. And there isn't a not, minimum... Not this uh, increasing the maximum sentence that is permissible, but a guaranteed minimum. A, gu- a guaranteed minimum sentence so that so if you, if you bite a Garda's finger, if you ram a Garda's car, if you assault a Garda in the line of duty, you should see uh, time uh, for that. And that's not that's not there at the moment. There's, o- there's also major problems with, with regards administration in Dublin. Like the Moore Street section just off O'Connell Street, which should be a cultural quarter, both historically and, you know, the wonderful market that was there for years, that's the location of defecation. It's the location of drugs and antisocial behaviour and it's been allowed to fester now for at least uh, 10 years without any real uh, administration uh, uh, fixed to it. Like, in 2016, that was meant to be rejuvenated. We were meant to make a street that was a replica of the Anne Frank Museum in Amsterdam so people could see the, you know, the history of, of the 1916 battlefield site that was there. And yes, today it's, it's an an absolute disastrous state because of a lack of proper administration. Very I sad. think that just on the Guardia issue today, I think 11 Guardia get the Scott Medal for Bravery, some of them posthumously. So the guards have done a fantastic job. Well, the guards job. Are doing a I, did, I didn't job. interrupt you. I agree absolutely it's with what state. you're saying about the guards being supported. But can I say, in my constituency of Loud, we had a huge drug problem. We had awful intimidation. We had houses being burned. We had people be actually being killed on the streets. That's all stopped because the Guardia are there in my town of Drogheda. We have 40 more additional Guardia. Now that's a 16 pretty of them. significant. 16, 16 of them community guardy, and that's the key to the future is, yeah. is not police driving around in, 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 in cars it's it, bodies on the ground and they're doing that in Drogheda they're doing okay. it exceptionally I, I, I well think and they're doing it very I, I, successfully I think you're changing the subject somewhat we're talking about our capital city here and Pat is we're asking about the specifically about Dublin look yeah. policing plays an important role in any area particularly in a capital city there's particular issues there but if government at government level and at local government level if people have given up on the north side of of Dublin city well then it needs serious intervention and you know as I say, policing is important, but if there are streets, as there are, for example, Marlborough Street, I don't know if anybody's walked what Marlborough Street recently. It is just shocking. Building after building is abandoned. Now, as long as you have that official abandonment of the north side. What kind of side, buildings are abandoned? I mean, the Lewis runs along Marlborough Street, so you'd expect a certain amount of foot traffic as people wait for the Lewis and so on. But there's buildings there, you know, three and four storey buildings that are completely vacant. Why? Look. look because nobody has no, but any I'm, I'm plan for that. I'm wondering who are that. the developers who have Over these buildings them. and are not developing them because and, this, and, and use maybe, it or lose it. I, th- I think yeah. the likelihood, Pat, is that there are many developers sitting on derelict buildings waiting for the opportunity mm. to knock them and build big apartment developments when the time is right for them. But like, we shouldn't be allowing people to leave buildings lying well, that's idle. That's the whole question you know, of uh, use it or lose it. Yes, mm. exactly. See, but, but Pat, <clears throat> we know what the government did in relation to vacant properties. You know, at last they introduced a tax this year. It was a tax of 0.3%. Like that's it's that's not, not, it's not serious. Fully that's not serious. Not fully we we need a penal well, tax look, uh, to force people, developers I, I to bring see, buildings I, into I use. I see the good things that are happening in Dublin, and I I say that Dublin city that I see from where I work and where I drive looks fantastic. I agree that there are issues in the north inner city. I don't live there. I'm not represented that area, but I do know that Pascal Dunn, who is, and I believe there's a huge investment in that constituency from him and from the north inner city See, partnership. Uh, and and the point Pat, is... Yeah, you, but, but that, I, that I, I just want to city. ask you, to, to put on, sure. if you like, the, the eyeglasses of a tourist. Sure, of course. And you yeah. walk around the GPO, yeah. the hallowed GPO, yeah, yeah. and you'll find all sorts of antisocial carry on there and at the spire yeah. um, and Does you would imagine in any other like, like say in, sure. in uh, London I mean, so would I you see this yeah. outside Buckingham Palace? Well you have Palace. a new Garda no. station you have a new Garda station on O'Connell Street so okay. I mean, I that, that is a reality but, but I have situation, seen the videos The situation has well, been allowed to get out of control it's, yeah. it's, the it's easy for yeah. Fergus to yeah. mention the exceptions to the rules but the truth of the matter is we are suffering significantly and in fairness to Louth County Council they've been very good at strategically CPOing buildings that have been allowed to go into vacancy and we need to do that far more in 
yeah. in terms of dereliction, especially where dereliction is attracting antisocial yeah. behaviour. One other area that I'd like to pinpoint is the four courts. Opposite the four courts, there is drugs being sold openly on the bridge o- yeah. o- over the Liffey there every single day. And it's just, I've never seen such a juxtaposition of the two Irelands that you have the centre of, of the legal criminal justice system on one side of the river and you have open sales of drugs on the other side. And again, the Gardaí have given up in terms of actually trying to police that area uh, for drug sales and that's wrong. And, and that's where you need a specific response in relation to the drugs problem. There's a and huge drugs mm. problem particularly yeah. in the city. Don't, don't, don't you just and, and need, that's how we're dealing no, with that no, no, issue but, now. But, but you need to you deal with it, not just police assembly. it out of the way. No, no, but you need to provide services for people. I agree. Pat, and those Pat, services also need to be provided. Drug rehabilitation yeah. services. Right now, I think the Citizens' Assembly is dealing with that issue. And there will be... Oh. No, but it's a different issue. No, no, no. It's about policy. Is it acceptable that outside the four courts... No, it's not. Or anywhere. The Bridewell just behind the four courts. Is it acceptable that there are people peddling drugs on on the bridge. However, Absolutely I have not. to ask yeah. you, yeah. if the guards stamp down on that, and they yeah. could easily, they get yeah. the people mm. patrolling the bridge, it'll move somewhere else. But that's, move. that's why drug issue, rehab... Pat, you, you had a, a young man a point, on your show Pat, already this week who, who stated himself that he had wonderfully travelled a big journey from uh, being addicted to drugs to yeah. now working on the front line of that. And the key element to that was investment uh, in a health-led approach. And we have a Citizens' Assembly that's asking this question, should we have a health-led approach? But we yeah. could actually put that in place right now. There's but nothing it, stopping but I think investments it's in it's residential drug rehabilitation yeah, centres for young people who want to give up drugs and they're not there at the moment. And, and the guy the, the the moving uh, you know, drug that the users citizens on assembly. into other areas, that is not a solution. Yeah. Okay, that, that's a uh, criminal justice solution. There's a role for the Gardaí in relation to drug dealing, undoubtedly. But in terms of people who are addicted, what they need is is health services. Pat, I think health that's services what to help them with the addiction. And they're not av- those services are not available. No, but it's probably not right. That no, 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 you don't have can, to have it as a citizen's no, assembly nobody, to know. Yeah, but do you not think that's a good thing, Pat? Because I do. I think that if we get the policies coming from the communities that are most affected by drugs, coming from the Gardaí, coming from the social workers, you get a plan that the government, whoever they are, can not ignore. It's, so it's I would known. not I would not diss as you do uh, things, good things that are happening. No, that no, is no. a good thing and we learn so from it. The, the citizens and I think, I think the key thing is tackling drugs is tackling poverty, tackling unemployment, tackling like what the government is doing in terms of the north inner city. That is the way to do it.